Good morning, everybody. I hope I can hold it together. Thank you all so much for coming. It's good to see so many of you come to share this time with us to celebrate Ursula's life and to be with us, to, to support us. We thank you for all the prayers, all the offers of comfort and upliftment. And please just share with us in this joyous occasion in this place of worship. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gus, and I add my word of welcome to all of you. Thank you so much for being here today as we celebrate Ursula's life and as we stand with um, those who love her and miss her and are grieving today and as we give thanks to God for Ursula. I want to read some words of promise that are given to us um, for a time like this, words from the scripture. The first is Jesus speaking in a graveyard and he says these surprising words in the presence of death he says I am the resurrection and the life those who believe in me even though they die will live and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases his mercies never come to an end they are new every morning God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in time of trouble. We're going to pray together. Let us pray. Lord God, this morning we give thanks for Ursula, for the gift she has been to us, for all those pictures up on the screen before us as we came in, uh, of her, her, her vibrancy, her love of life, uh, pictures of, 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 of beauty and, and fine food and color. We give thanks for the way that she has touched our lives and colored our lives. We are grateful, Lord, that today in our deep sadness, you are here and you hold us and you weep with us and you sit with us. We pray that as we worship you today and give thanks for Ursula, that we would find strength in the hope that you give us, that we would be encouraged and able to pay tribute to this remarkable lady. So be near to us, we pray. May we know a peace that passes all understanding. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hopefully, as you came in, you would have picked up one of these. Um, they're at the back. If you didn't manage to, to, to get a copy, um, there should be plenty. Uh, stunning, stunning photo on the front of, of Earth. And we're going to sing the first of the two hymns um, on the inside sheet. To God be the glory, great things he has done. Shall we stand as we sing together? Praise the Lord. 
and greater rejoicing through Jesus the Son, but pure and higher and greater will be a wonder, a rapture when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory. Great things he has done. Thank you. Please be seated. We meet in this solemn moment to worship God, to give thanks for the life of our sister Ursula, to commend her to God's loving and faithful care, and to pray for all who mourn. In the presence of death, Christ offers us sure ground for hope and confidence and even for joy, because he shared our human life and death, was raised again triumphant, and lives forevermore. In him, his people find eternal life. Let us then hear the words of Holy Scripture that from them we may draw some comfort and strength. I want to read first the very familiar words of the 23rd Psalm. This is David writing of his own lived experience of God as shepherd. And he says, The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. He lets me rest in fields of green grass and leads me to quiet pools of fresh water. He gives me new strength. He guides me in the right paths as he has promised. Even if I go through the deepest darkness, I will not be afraid, Lord, for you are with me. Your shepherd's rod and staff protect me. You prepare a banquet for me where all my enemies can see me. You welcome me as an honored guest and fill my cup to the brim. I know that your goodness and love will be with me all my life, and your house will be my home as long as I live. And then a reading from John's Gospel, and this is uh, the... The, the verse that we read earlier, Jesus speaking outside the tomb of Lazarus, his friend. And so we pick up in chapter 11 of John from verse 20. When Martha, Lazarus' sister, heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had only been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha replied, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. And we move a bit later in the passage, and Martha's sister Mary comes out. And when she reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had only been here, my brother would not have died. And when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had also come along with her weeping, He was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him, he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. And we'll come back to that passage a little later on. One of the things that we want to do today is to to remember Ursula well, to pay tribute to her. There will be stories told about her we've seen stories told in image on the screen already this morning i want to just read um some words that that uh, gus forwarded to me um just some some uh, some of the details of, of ursula's life 
and then uh, Robin will come and share, and then after that there are others who are going to speak as well. Ursula was born on the 9th of November 1971 at Marion Hill Hospital, and as in later life, she did not wait for the gynecologist to be in attendance, she just arrived when she was ready. She attended North Dean Primary School and then went on to Durban Girls High School. She went on to Natal Technicon to study food and nutrition and attained her higher diploma. She had a very varied career following her passion for food and this involved working in a private game lodge, the Royal Hotel, abroad in Ireland, and then Unilever doing product research and development. Her photo, I didn't know this, her photo appeared on the, on the is it Knorr, you say the K, Knorr soup packets for her work on reducing the salt but retaining the flavor. For Unilever, she went to Germany and worked there on further development and visited China as well. After, after leaving Unilever, she came back and was involved in working for Wonderbag, a rice importer and distributor, a vegetarian food developer and distributor, and her latest position involved traveling to Burkina Faso to assist with various agricultural processes to Eritrea and to Kenya. On her, at her 40th birthday party, she met the love of her life, and she and Mo were later married on the, in August of 2015. And then Ursula was diagnosed with cancer in September last year, and all along the way was so positive about beating this disease, but sadly she did not win the battle. So thank you for those, those words uh, from Gus. I think Robin's going to come and speak. Good morning, everybody. I'm Ursula's sister, Robin. Firstly, I would thank everyone here and everyone online and Facebook friends on behalf of my parents and our family and Mo and his family for all the love, prayers, messages and support. Also for all the food and visits. It was really appreciated as we spent the last week and a half caring for Ursh. I always said I would never speak at the service of a loved one, but how could I not talk about my sister? She had a knack for pushing me out of my comfort zone. <laughs> Today I have written a speech, so for those who were at Urgy's 50th birthday party, this would not be a one-liner. I felt I had so much to say at the party that I put my hand up to speak, and all I could say was, Urge is the most generous person I know, and then I ran out of words. This still stands. All the comments on Facebook, messages, and visits are testimony to this. I really believe my sister lived her faith. She loved, helped, and served people, regardless of race, culture, religion, social status. She and Mo welcomed all into their home and just expected everyone to get along and have fun. Urge loved people and loved the visitors, even in her last days. When asked, she said she wanted the visitors and no, they were not too noisy. One day last week, she asked why people weren't visiting, and we had to explain it was a weekday and people were at work. Urge was an amazing aunt to our children. When she lived and worked in Ireland, Luke and Rebecca got regular posts from Ireland. For those who remember, we have postcards with all those pictures, with sheep and so on, and we still have a tin of beautiful postcards from Ireland with news of Urge's work and travels. She also used to take Luke and Rebecca from Tani on fun outings and sleepovers at her flat, teach them cooking and things. And I used to tell them that if Auntie Ursha's cell phone rang and they were at the shops or somewhere, they must hang on to her clothing because she might get chatting and forget they were with her. Because <laughs> cell phones were new then and yeah, I didn't know what would happen, so. I'd like to finish with a quote from Ephesians chapter two, verse 10. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. I'd like to believe that Urge did all those good works and more, and she just finished them too quickly. So she has gone home to her Father in heaven, 
She did not want to leave this earth so soon. <laughs> Sorry. She did not want to leave all of us alone and sad. <clears throat> but urge you set the bar high, and we are better for knowing and loving you. You were a beautiful, loyal daughter, sister, aunt, wife, in-law, and friend. And just by the way, I was privileged to be able to tell Urge most of this before she passed away. We did have a lot of time together. Thank you. Thank you, Robin. Um, I know that there are others who've prepared uh, words to share, and we're not sure what order you're coming up in, so when you're ready, you can make your way forward, uh, those who have something to share. Thank you. I don't really like the podium. Right. <clears throat> uh, um, the first reading I have is from Lara. Um, Ursula introduced her to Khalil Re Gibran, and Lara's asked me just to read a few words that come from him. When you are sorrowful, look again in your heart, and you shall see that in truth, you are weeping for that which has been your delight. And that was Ursula. <clears throat> and the next one I've prepared, it's just to honor Ursula because she always opened her home and her heart to everybody. Remember me, remember Ursh. Don't remember Ursh with sadness. Don't remember Ursh with tears. Remember all her laughter, her joy. Remember all her passion, her love for life, for her family, for her furry children, for her garden, and especially for Mo. Her short life was all worthwhile, all her incredible travels, all her celebrations. Ursh never did anything without going that extra mile for everyone. Remember Ursh as you all journey through life. Ursh was a light in our lives. Her zest for life was infectious. If she should come to mind, remember that she will only be half a step behind. Until we meet again, Ursh. And then I've just chosen a poem written by Mary Elizabeth Fry. Do not stand at my grave and weep. Do not stand at my grave and weep. I am not there. I do not sleep. I am a thousand winds that blow. I am the diamonds that glint on snow. I am the sunlight on ripened grain. I am the gentle autumn rain. When you awaken in the morning's hush, I am the swift, uplifting rush of quiet birds and circled light. I am the soft stars that shine at night. Do not stand at my grave and cry, I am not there. I did not die. Okay, this is a lot harder than it looked. <laughs> today, we gather <coughs> today we gather to celebrate the life of Ursula, a dear friend, wife, sister, and daughter, who spread joy and kindness, laughter, wherever she went. 
Ursula's heart was pure and gold, always willing to lend a helping hand, offer a listening ear, and share her infectious smile with everybody. Her generosity knew no bounds. She gave freely of her time, resources, and love, always putting others before herself. And yet, she never sought recognition or praise. She simply did it because it brought her joy to see others happy. But Ursula wasn't just kind and generous, she was also the life of the party. Her quick wit, cheeky humor, and playful teasing could always be counted on to bring laughter and smiles to those around her. She had a way of making everyone feel seen, heard, and loved. Whether she was tending to her garden, whipping up a storm in the kitchen, or regaling us with tales of her adventures, Ursula's zest for life was contagious. She inspired us to live more fully, to cherish every moment, and to never take ourselves too seriously. As we say goodbye to our dear friend, we remember her boundless kindness, her generous spirit, her irrepressible humor. We'll miss her dearly, but we take comfort in the knowledge that her legacy lives on through the countless lives she touched, the memories we shared, and the laughter we'll continue to enjoy in her honor. Rest in peace, our dear Ursula. May your wit and wisdom continue to inspire us all. Sure. Ursula, where do I start? There are so many moments that one can share about Ursula, but I'll start from where we met. I'm Jermaine, I'm a close friend of Ursula. We met, first met Ursula in 1995 at Durban Girls High in Standard 6. It just shows how old we are. In those days we had standards and not grades. One memory of Ursula in our school days was swapping lunch. Ursula's mom used to make the most amazing curry brawn sandwiches. And I love peanut butter and jam. So I can tell you it's good to say Ursula had her fair share of peanut butter and jam sandwiches. <laughs> Ursula was known to, by many names. Ursula, Ursh, and as she told Sean, Ursula. Um, chef, the most talented I know, even starting her YouTube channel, At Home with Ursh recently, which she was so proud of. Daughter to her mom, Jean, and dad, Gus, who she always spoke highly of. Sister to Robin, aunt to Luke and Rebecca, who, was very who she was very proud of. Mommy to Jess and Jimmy, her babies. Wife to Mo, who has been the most amazing husband to my friend. Ursula always said she waited a long time to meet Mo, and clearly good things come to those that wait. So Mo's a very lucky man. But most of all, a friend. To everyone here today, I'm honored to call Ursula my friend. There are many words to describe Ursula. I'm gonna just go through a few. Selfless, caring, kindness, spontaneous, generous, creative, talented, artistic, passionate, enthusiastic, courageous, zest for life, funny. Ursula knew how to make me laugh. Positive outlook on life and a fighter, not a fighter with Mo, but a fighter to beat her pancreatic cancer. Ursula had so many talents, baking. Ursula made the most beautiful cakes. Our special occasions always had an Ursula cake on the table. People that didn't know Ursula well called her the cake lady. I had a cheeky friend who once said, she's not coming to my party unless I have an Ursula cake. Another friend mentioned this past week that Ursula's cakes will always pop up on her Facebook memory, so Ursula will always be around. I'm sure most people here today has had a cake baked by Ursula. Cooking. Ursula would always be my go-to and I needed to work out how to make something. She would type the recipe out on WhatsApp within minutes. There was nothing too much for Ursula. After having a crab curry with Mo and Ursula at her house one day, my husband even told me I needed to step up my game. <laughs> As this was the first time he had ate, eaten a crab curry without having to fight the crab for its meat. <laughs> Ursula would call me whilst I was halfway through preparing dinner and tell me, put the food in the fridge and come for dinner. She's made something yum. It helps living three k's down the road. Flowers, Ursula always had the most amazing rose bushes and flowers in her garden. Her garden was her happy place. 
Mo is now going to have to step up his game to keep Ursula's garden as beautiful. I'm truly blessed to be able to spend time with Ursula this past year, be it to go fishing at 5 a.m. I was so excited the night before, our car trip to the Kruger for a week last August, nothing better than going for a five day away with a good friend who's also a foodie, I'll tell you. Fun dinner evenings with friends with loads of laughs, time down the coast in December, or just a quiet dinner, just the four of us. I'm truly blessed to have these cherished moments and memories. I'll, tre I'll, tre oh, I'll treasure our special time together, memories and laughs, laughs to last a lifetime. There were some who bring light to this, there are some, sorry, this is a quote that I've got. There are some who bring so, a light so great to this world that even after they have gone, the light remains. Ursula, you will always have a special place in my heart. Now is your time to rest peacefully and be pain free, my friend. Hi, just a, a message from some of Ursula's good friends in Turkey. So from Zeynep, uh, Naz, and all her friends. And these are the words of Zeynep to saying, starting off as work colleagues and ending up as family. Uh, and just the deep connection that she had with, with Ursh. The distance, uh, language, and religion mean, meant nothing, nothing to their friendship. And in the words from uh, they know to say, you guys, they will always be there for you as family. Hi, I'm Dustin. Um, I've known Ursula since 1977 when we met uh, at North Dean Primary in grade two. And she criticized my plasticine men and told me I needed to step up. So that was a starting point. Um, and our life journey over the last 50 odd years uh, has been amazing and it's been crisscrossed uh, on numerous occasions. Um, I knew Ursh through our primary school. I, uh, we also studied together. We ended up going out as friends uh, in our early or late teens, early 20s. Um, and then latter part, we worked together at Unilever. Many a time people have mentioned how proud she is. And when I say proud, exacting. She was an amazing chef. Um, she did some amazing work with Noor uh, within the Unilever brand portfolio, um, and she was well respected, not just locally, but internationally. And she was an amazing woman. And you know, you look at that exacting personality, and that carried through her entire life with everything she touched. Um, more recently, she's played a significant role in my family's every change so my two children she's a godmother to my one child she was there when they were when she was when he was born she was born she was there when my second child was born uh, men, she's been mentioned a lot as being so giving and um, so engaging at every point in my family's life whether it was a tragedy or a celebration Ursh was there with her friendly smile uh, she continued to be very gracious and and very giving at every point. And that will be something special that we will remember forever. Um, I think one of the things that is important for me within Ursh's life is that we will never forget her. Uh, she's had too big an impact. And I, and I look at all of us will be able to recall moments in our engagements with Ursh around how impactful that has been and how special that has been. Um, because she really is impactful in our lives. Um, even my kids at the moment are, are really grieving for her loss, but, but one of the things they were saying is, we have so many good memories, 
And I think that that is so special. So Ursula might not be with us, but she'll never be forgotten. Um, and she's such a special person. And uh, to the family, uh, just, just know that uh, you guys are amazing. And the gift of Ursula to us has been such a blessing. Uh, for Mo, uh, Mo came into our lives 10 years ago, uh, 10 years ago, give or take. Um, and Ursula's brought a friend to me uh, in the form of Mo, and he's played such an important role in our lives as well. And without Ursula having done that, that would never have happened. So we are very, very grateful, and, and I commemorate Ursh and the blessing that she's been to, to my family and to each and every one of you. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. My name is Brenda. I didn't want to come up, but I feel like I owe it to Ash to speak about her on, be, on her behalf. I met Ash in uh, 2009 at Highway Hospice. She came at Highway Hospice for something else. I was just a chef there. I didn't even know how to bake, but because of something else she came, I saw her photos, and I just wanted her to teach me, and she told me that she can't hire anyone because she can't pay me, and I volunteered to work for her for free. But she ended up to be like something big to me. Today I have a baking business because of her. Today I'm something else because of her. She, she was like my sister, she was my rock, she was my everything. Today we gather to remember Ash, a person who meant the world to me and so many others. She was not just a friend, she was my confidant, my rock, and my source of lotta. Ash had a way of brightening every room. She entered with her infectious smile and genuine kindness. She was there for me through the highs and lows offering unvarying support and understanding. She touched countless lives with her warmth and compassion. Through her physical presence may be gone. Her spirit will continue to live on in our hearts. May her soul rest in peace. Thank you. Thank you so much for everybody who has shared. I know there are many more stories. Uh, there'll be a chance to, to, uh, to share them over tea after the service, and I, and I hope that you will keep sharing your stories with the family. Uh, it's the most wonderful thing to hear how, um, how, how somebody you love has touched the lives of others. So uh, that would be a real gift to them. When I met with, with Mo and some of Ursula's family on Sunday morning, um, they were talking about the numbers of people who would be here today. And I, and I said immediately, well, you know, it's, it's usually a lot less than we expect will come to the service. I was wrong. Um, there are all sorts of reasons why people aren't able to make it here, but, but Mo just said quietly, well, Ursula has quite a large and diverse group of friends. And I see you here today, and I know there are many joining us online as well today. Um, and that's a, that's, a, that's a tribute to her. This group who are here in person today to celebrate Ursula's life, the number of people online, and the range of tributes that are being paid to Ursula, not just today, but on, on Facebook. There's a stream, a constant stream, of people writing about her online. And these all bear testimony to how many lives she has touched, and just how much she was appreciated. I was struck by how many of those tributes go way back, long-standing friendships, long, loyal friendships. And the tributes that people have written and spoken speak consistently of her talent, her love of life, her passion for life. Those are themes that keep coming up 
But what they all hint at as well is her generosity, her readiness to go out of her way for others, a selflessness that is inspiring to us. In many ways, she has shown us what a full life looks like and how to live well. But maybe it's easy to live well when, uh, and, and with joy when you are surrounded by good things, by friends and family who love you, by beautiful gardens and food and adoring schnauzers. Ursula may have shown us what it is to live well, but even more impressive about her is what she has shown us over the last six months. How we respond when things don't go our way, how we face pain and sadness, how we face death, speaks volumes about who we are. And Ursula has been so unbelievably courageous, positive, and unselfish over these months. You would have excused her for becoming self-absorbed in this time, but she hasn't. Even at some of the hardest times, her concern has been for others. We were praying in the hospital together just recently, and some of the family were tearful, and she was scolding you, right? Stop that. No sadness. I don't like to see you sad. Cut that out. And uh, Mo, I think you were saying um, this weekend, even at that stage, her concern was for others. I don't want to see you sad. But today, we have permission to cry. Maybe not from Ursula, but it's appropriate that we grieve, and our tears are a tribute to this beloved child of God whom we love. We have permission to weep because in our reading this morning, even Jesus weeps as he shares the sadness of the people grieving the passing of Lazarus. And today, Jesus weeps with us. He doesn't rush us ahead to the hopeful truth that he would share with us about eternity, about life beyond death. For now, he is with us, and he weeps with us. He understands that we are devastated. Today, we also have permission to be angry. It's not fair that we're saying goodbye to Ursula today. She should have had many more years. It's not fair for parents to have to bury a child. We want to rage against the unfairness of what we face today. We may want to say to God, why did you allow this to happen? We prayed, but here we are. Well, we have permission to speak to God like this. In the reading this morning, both Mary and Martha say to Jesus, we wouldn't be here if you had come sooner. Why did you let this happen? There's another reason, though, that we have permission to be angry today. In this passage, even Jesus is angry. There's an unusual Greek word in the text that in our translation this morning is translated, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. But some scholars say that a more accurate translation is that Jesus gave a snort of anger as he stood outside that tomb. He was angry. At what? Not at the people, not at God. He was angry at death itself, this awful thing that has invaded God's good world. Death will not always be a part of our reality because this enemy has been defeated. But today we have to face death. And today Jesus is angry with us. He understands. I want to say that today we also have permission to hope. Today, everything seems hopeless. We are numb, we are sad, we are angry, we are overwhelmed. We can't imagine how we will come through this. But as he did on that day, in a place of complete hopelessness, Jesus speaks the most unlikely words of hope to us. On that day, standing in a graveyard of all places, Jesus speaks to that grieving crowd about life beyond death. I'm not sure if they were ready to hear that message, and maybe we aren't either yet, but it's true. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live, he says, even though they die. Whoever lives by believing in me will never die. I don't pretend to understand the physics of how God will arrange all of this, how we will pass through death into life, how it will all be organized. But Jesus speaks about this all the time. 
he speaks about this great hope that his people have. In John 14, he gives us a picture of a house that's being prepared for us. And he says he is like a host who is getting everything ready for the guests who are coming. St. Paul in Romans 8 says, Nothing can separate us from the love of God, not even death. We are held safely in God's hands. In John's revelation, we are told that what awaits God's people is a place where there is no more death, no more sadness, no more tears. We are given permission to hope today. We are invited to hope. I love the picture that Bishop Zippo Siwa used at Nelson Mandela's funeral. He says, what is dying? A ship sails and I stand watching till she fades on the horizon and someone at my side says she is gone. Gone where? Well, gone from my sight, that is all. The ship is still as large as when I saw her last. The diminished size and total loss of sight is in me, not in her. And just at the moment when someone next to me says she is gone, there are others who are watching her coming. And their voices take up a glad shout, here she comes. And that is dying. And that's a hopeful picture to hold on to this morning. But we have a road to walk before we experience the joy of that reunion. And the promise of, that God gives us is that we will never be alone as we walk this road. In the psalm, we read how David says, the Lord is his shepherd who brings him to green pastures and still waters, and those are lovely images of good, peaceful days. But even more important is the promise that we are not left alone in dark and difficult times. That when we enter the valley of the shadow of death, the shepherd remains with us. His rod and his staff, they strengthen us. And that has been Ursula's experience. In the darkness of the last few weeks, she has never been alone. She's been constantly surrounded by family and friends who love her. That it was an incredible thing to be in that room and just to sense that she was held by the love of those who loved her. She's been inundated with visits and messages from friends. And in that dark valley, the Good Shepherd has been her constant companion right up to the moment when she passed through death into life. The same shepherd will accompany us as we walk this road of grief with permission to weep, to be angry, and to hope. He will be with us until that glorious day when we are all reunited in the presence of God. And until then, as, as others have already urged us, we continue to remember Ursula, to speak of her often with warmth and with love, to continue to be inspired by her example of living each day with passion, of giving ourselves away for the sake of others, of appreciating and celebrating beauty in this life. I think just looking at the arrangements for today, the, the flowers, um, the, even the presentation of the food alongside um, for after the service, there's a sense that um, she is speaking to us through the beauty that's, that's been prepared in her honor. And so we will remember her well until that day when we are together again. Amen. Let us pray together. Eternal God, in your wisdom and grace, you have given us joy through the lives of your departed servants. We thank you today for Ursula and for our memories of her. We praise you for your goodness and mercy that followed her all the days of her life and for her faithfulness in the tasks to which you called her. We thank you, Lord, that for Ursula the tribulations of this world are over and death is behind her. And we pray that you will bring us with her to the joy of your perfect kingdom. Almighty God, Father of all mercies and giver of all comfort, deal graciously with we who mourn, that we may cast every care on you and know the consolation of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
We're going to sing our, our second song now, and it's a song that uh, takes us to green pastures and dark valleys, and a song where we're invited to bless God in the midst of all those places where we encounter Him. Shall we stand as we sing together? to remain standing as we entrust Ursula to the one in whom she placed her trust. Let us commend Ursula to God. Into your keeping, O merciful God, we commend your daughter, Ursula. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the joy of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to end the service in a moment with a blessing and I ask you then to remain standing and the family will lead us out and they'll come through um, to the hall alongside where you're invited to come and join them for some, some eats, some refreshments. So we receive the blessing of God. The peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain with us always. Amen.